Porter Z in the mix on 1FM for the next couple of hours. Dummy, the seminal debut album by UK based music group Portishead. Courtney Crummering, the Eisner Award nominated series by cartoonist Ted Nafee. Through sheer happenstance of having impeccably good taste, I discovered that these two paired well like Pinot Noir and Chicken Parmigiana, or a root beer and a good burger, whichever you prefer. I'm sure there are a lot of opinions around about playing music to accompany your reading, all of them correct, some more correct than others. Regardless, my endorsement of this combination stands. Portishead's debut album stands alongside Massive Attack's Blue Lines and Debut by Bjork as one of the early pioneers of trip hop, helping to launch the genre beyond the subterranean scene in Bristol, England. Music producer and DJ Jeff Barrow and singer-songwriter Beth Gibbons first recorded sounds together in 91. Two became three when they were joined by Adrian Utley, who introduced a few unique instruments and a jazzy flair. Between them, the band dove deep into experimentation that went even deeper with their later projects. But Dummy has its own special place as a groundbreaking record for trip hop, and one of my personal favorite albums, for whatever that's worth. The Courtney Crumlin series is a young adult urban fantasy comic that can very loosely be described as Mandy from Grim Adventures moving into her uncle Snape's house. Aloysius Crumlin is a powerful warlock who takes Courtney under his wing as a witch in training. Over the course of the series, Courtney gets in and out of trouble with dangerous night creatures and navigates the secret society of sorcerers in her new home in Hillsboro. Although the series doesn't stray far outside of its PG rating, it is a dark fantasy bordering well on horror. In my head, it holds a place somewhere in between Neil Gaiman's Sandman and Coraline for its tone and the fantasy elements which draw inspiration from European folklore. Also, there are a lot of talking cats. <laughs> Hi there, welcome to the new music. If you're a music fan who pays attention to music reviews, then you may have checked out Porter's Head after Melody Maker named their debut album, Dummy, the best album of 1994. Yes. Dummy became a phenomenon for good reason. There is never a low point across its 11 tracks. It lulls with smooth blues and jazzy sounds on top of down simple beats using samples from the likes of War and Isaac Hayes, well as original samples from Utley and Barrow themselves. Part of what makes Dummy such a distinct album is its atmosphere. It's moody, it's dramatic, and most of all, it's haunting. The chill bedroom track vibe deceptively carries an eerie depth. It lulls you with a smooth melody and then challenges you with a brace of disharmony. It's a Fire opens with this creepy string section before slowly transitioning into a jazzy soulful organ backed by an easy drum beat and then splashes you in the face again with the creepy strings. It's the sort of blending of sounds that can only work with expert production. And don't even get me started on the vocal. In the first issue of the first volume of Courtney Crummer and the Night Things, 
Courtney and her parents move into her great uncle's mansion, which is thought to be haunted by the town children, which it is. And since she lives in a creepy house and she's new in town, she's got no friends, except for one. And they both get their lunch money taken by a gang of schoolyard bullies. Anyway, I'm not gonna bother telling you her new friend's name because before too long, he and Courtney take a shortcut through the woods to escape said bullies, and he gets eaten by a goblin. That, more or less, sets the tone for the series. The violence that exists is muted or off screen altogether, but it adds a pervasive sense of danger and mystery throughout the series. There are always monsters lurking in shadows and hiding just around corners. As Courtney gets wiser with her witchcraft, she learns to use it to her advantage, and soon enough she's regularly steeped in shadow and is as feared and dangerous as the night creatures themselves. At the end of the first issue, she learns how to bind the goblin that ate her friend and six it on her bully. Not to kill them or anything, she doesn't commit her first murder till volume two. influencing trip hop's musical pedigree. As much as the sound is attractive to rappers, as proven by a tricky kid partnering with Massive Attack, the genre is dominated by female vocalists. If the production of Jeff Burrow and Adrian Utley are Dummy's beating heart, then Beth Gibbons' voice is the soulful uh, soul. Given his vocals across the album carries a deeply affecting tone with her subtle range and finely tuned control. In Rhodes, one minute she's smooth and soothing, floating on top of the instrumentation, and the next she's quick and cutting with the fast vibrato that sounds so fragile you might think it'll break at any moment. Paired with her lyrics, there's an emotional core to the album that's candid and confident in its display of vulnerability and loneliness. confessed, rude, foul-tempered misanthrope, Courtney is alienated from her much more well-to-do classmates. And her parents don't know her very well and are generally ignorant of the things she gets up to. The few friends she ever does have are dead or generally distant. She sinks deeper into the world of magic and away from normal society, but can't shake her want for companionship. Unfortunately, nearly everyone who gets too close inevitably experiences something horrible. Over the course of the series, Courtney contends with murderous trolls, murderous warlocks, and immortal sorceresses who are potentially murderous. Yet the only thing that ever manages to shake her calm veneer is her ongoing struggle with isolation and loneliness.
I hope you liked that. If you did, click the corresponding button and subscribe so you can find your way back. If you didn't, then freeze right where you are, back away slowly, and forget we ever met. Goodbye.